In this code, we nest one loop within another loop to achieve an end result. I'm going to take you back to the second or third grade where you learn to do multiplication tables. And we're going to do this through some Java code. We start off with a class called multiplication table. And as you know, we learned earlier in the class that it has to be in a source file by the same name with a .java extension. We have a string called s input, a string called s output, an integer called i table. And this is a new object. I'm not sure if we introduced it before. It's called decimal format and allows us to set a formatting object for a number. In this one, we want two decimal positions. So we're going to have a number that can go from 1 to 99, or 0 to 99. We have a do loop. And do you remember how a do loop differentiates from the other type? And if you said it executes at least once, you did a great job. This is the beginning of the do loop. And way, way down here is the end of the do while loop. And you notice we set it to true. This is what we call an infinite loop. It will always, always execute. So you have to be assured that somewhere in here in the code, we must provide or code a way to end the loop or exit the loop. Right here, we set the output to blank and we prompt the user enter integer between 1 and 10 to produce a multiplication table. And if the user presses the cancel button, null gets put into s input. We check to see if s input equals a null and we break out. This is how we exit the loop. Break breaks us out of the while. Okay, the next thing we try to do is we try to convert what they entered in string to an integer. If something goes wrong, what we do is we catch the error and we tell it to continue back up at the top again. If they didn't press the cancel button and if they did enter a valid number, our next check is to make sure it's in the range of 1 through 10. So if you enter something less than 1 or something greater than 10, we continue. We go back up to the top and we reprompt them. Now here is the guts of the program. We have one for loop and we have a second for loop. And notice this for loop is inside this loop. So here's the beginning of that for loop, and here's the end. Here's the beginning of the inner loop, for loop that is, and the end of the inner for loop. So think of this as the row. This is where the numbers are going to go down the side, and the column, which is the inner loop, is how we go across this way. So we start at 1, and we go less than or equal to the um, number that the user entered, and we increment. Then immediately we get into a loop, and we start the column from 1, to we're going to go less than or equal to what they enter we're going to in, um, increment and then what we basically do is we format the product or the multiplication of the row times the column and we put it out to the screen let me run this and you can get an appreciation for what it will do I'm going to minimize this and move this over here so we can see what it's doing so I'm going to leave I'm going to put in a number that's not valid and you will see that during the conversion the catch will continue um, catch the code error and we'll send it back up to the top to the loop So we are right here, so we went back up. So I'm going to put in 11. And I'm going to click OK. And you notice that it did convert it, but it told us to go back up to the top. So I'm going to put 5. We're going to do a nice 5 by 5 multiplication table. We click OK, and here's what we got. You'll notice that this code went down the side. In the inner loop, the for loop, went across. So the first time through, it was 1. We entered the loop, and we said column starts at 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 5? And it is, so we go in, we do 1 times 1, we format it to 2 digits or 2 um, positions, and we put it off the screen. That's where we get the 01. Then we come back up here to the inner loop, and we add 1 to the counter, so it is now 2. 2 is less than or equal to um, the 5 maximum, you know, because we're doing 5 across. So we do row 1, which is still a 1, times 2, and we get 2, and then we get 3. 4, and 5. Once we increment to 6, we drop out, and we come back up to the outer loop, and we increment i row by 1. So now we're right here. So 2 is less than or equal to 5. So we enter the inner loop. Then we get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Then we come out and go here, and then across, and come out and go here and again.